Uh, Shadow Kings of, of Valeria, are you ready to talk about that one or you want to skip Ooh, that? Oh, yes. I'm actually having it on my table and working on a preview for it right now. Yeah. This is a very, very, very interesting game. Now, this one is uh, designed by my friend Stan Kodansky. He lives where I'm at. He's a friend oh, of mine. That's um, from uh, in, I, in Press Impresario. Rurik Donakiev, Old West Impresario. Yeah. So, and Old West Impresario. Okay, let me just slide this board out over here. Hey, Jeff, we're getting gumbo. I've got Jeremy Howard and Burley here, and we're talking Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. Okay, so Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria is a dice game. So it's a little bit of a dice game, actually. It's a worker placement game where you'd be placing workers all around this board right here. Um, so you'd be placing workers all around this board. You're basically a, like a warmonger trying to score the most points. All right? Um, so what you're doing is, is you're trying to get these battle cards, and battle cards have – specific dice conditions on them whether they are like hey get this die with this color on it which is really just a die with this color on it um two brown and a green that kind of thing like that and you're also going to try to do a little set collection with this little icon right here on the bottom so there's a couple things you need to pay attention to but the die you see this right here this little die you see how it has a number on it it has a number sorry i'll flip it over it's got a number and then uh, for like their influence. And on the bottom, it's got like a negative, which is like coins. It's a discount. And then the other one is just a type of die, like we saw on the cards. And what you're doing is, is like placing your worker on a spot. And then you take the action in one of those five spots, which is really just trying to get the die on your board. Okay. So what happens is when you do this and you start to turn these things in, um, and you can get things that give you like bonuses for having certain stuff. You got champions that'll help you out and trigger some more bonuses for having specific things. But what you're doing on this board, and this is the well, this is like the coolest part. When you turn these things in, you start unlocking spots on your board. So you kind of start building an engine for yourself. You have this like influence number up here, and what you do is you turn. I'm sorry, I have a glare in my room. What you do is you turn an influence that total is the total of your die that you turn in, and that will help you score points. Now, as you do that, you will also slide these little chits off your board, okay? And they open up the, the ability to do more things on your board. And this is where the coolest part in the game, to me is at least, you start to build your engine by taking those pieces that you take off your board and you start to put them on the side battle board, okay? Now, the side battle board awards you bonuses for covering them up, but then also when you cover the other one up between them, the, the reward that's in between them becomes your reward. So if you have, let me set this up. If you do both of these right here, the middle reward is yours. I'm so, oh, actually, no, sorry. This and this, like that. Sorry, like that. So that one in the black in the middle is yours. So you have like multiple ways to dice manipulate, score trigger combos. Um, and then you also have this little sideboard that's like another little game as you open up your board. So you'll always have like this very, um, and I use this term very often this very pleasing experience of like, okay, so I have a restricted board. I can only score so many points because my influence isn't high enough just yet. Well, I can open up my influence as soon as I get my first battle plan done. Okay. Or, or, or maybe not. Maybe I want to open it up. So I just get more magic that I can use and magic manipulates your die. Or maybe I don't have the right, the right type of die. So then I, I have a gem that I can get and the gem can flip it from a one to a six or flip it to its opposite side or act as any color. Okay, that's pretty cool. But as I open up my board, you know, and maybe I just score combos by having these little assistants in the game that they have, they have little bonuses and stuff. But when I start taking these things off, I start putting it on this sideboard and I can score for cards that I already have. I can score for having a certain amount of battle points. And when I'm doing that, I'm paying attention to how I cover these up so I can get these bonuses at the same time. More bonuses, more bonuses, more bonuses. That, and you're that, that's kind that. of a hallmark of Stan's designs. He loves yeah. all these multiple options yeah. and bringing up all these bonuses. I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here, you know? So so the thing with, with Stan, and I know that what Stan is all about, he's about being overpowered and having powerful turns. He right. like, kind of says that all the time, like powerful turns. You should always feel super power, like you're getting something out of it. Um, and he doesn't like dead turns. You, he, when you play against him, he immediately chases the engine of the game. Like he does not waste that. Like he goes towards 
big turns even early in his game. So when I watch him play like lock up, like I watch how he builds these short engines and they open it up real quick for him. And I, I've, you know, like now that I've learned that I really focus on that in when I play his games and it just works, you know, even in Rurik it works. Like there's a way that you can be aggressive and, and or not aggressive and still, you know, get ahead in that game. And I, yeah, I honestly, I think this is going to be another hit. So Perla, what you think? Any questions? Don't have any that. So it's not out yet. This one hits Kickstarter next week, Tuesday. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Next Tuesday, um, yeah. So yeah. I, the pictures that I'm showing this, this is the art and everything that, uh, yeah. The Miko. Miko stuff. Yeah. Miko art. Is this wow. the Miko? Really? Yeah. It's Miko. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, Miko, does all, Miko does all their art though. Oh, so he this does. is, this is coming from final front, uh, final frontier. No, this is oh. from uh, daily magic. He oh. does all their art. He does daily magic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He does all of the Margaret's of Valeria running through my hands at yeah. work recently. All of so. Valeria. Yeah, so this yeah. this is gonna take a lot. Uh, I'd say about an hour, hour and a half, probably depending on the player count and people how they know the game. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited about this. I played the solo mode several times live uh, because it is an easy one to get up, get to the table and play. Um, yeah, it's just a smart design, man. Like it's smart, it's smart. Not quite a lunchtime game, just a little no, bit longer. No, 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 longer, longer than a lunchtime game. Did yeah. you have on over there? What's that? But it looks like you've got the eye of Sauron on the board there. Uh, yeah, I know it does. It does look like the eye of Sauron. Yeah, they got some pretty like nasty looking guys on here. Uh, it is very. Um, I like it. It's just got a, like a dark theme looking look to it. But ultimately, it's. I mean, it's not like it's. Uh, oh, here I'll tell you a little story about this game. Do you guess what the theme of this game was? Old West. Nope. Oh, chefs. Oh. It was a dice chef game. Dice chefs. <laughs> yeah, it was about chefs. It's kind of fun. It's so really the, so the sideboard would have been kind of the ingredients or recipe. Yeah, like orders and stuff. Yeah, like it was like a conveyor well, I belt. See that? Like yeah, conveyor belt. They, he took kind of he took the conveyor belt thing out of it with the dice changing, but he definitely I can still see some of the remnants of that game. But yeah, there, there's some people in the chat crew that would love that kind of game. Chuck, Chuck, yeah. our friend Chuck would have loved that uh, game for sure. Yeah.